Hey everybody, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Day. Hope you liked the UK episode. Get your uh, Geography Now merch like this mug or this gym bag or these shirts, but not this ragged because I kind of messed this one up at geographynow.com. Not selling out if it's your brand. Anywho, so made a little mistake in the episode. In Hannah's culture segment, I uh, accidentally said Mac Ginn. It's Mac Gim. Some stuff I didn't get to put in the episode that I really wish I could have. Portugal, I should have put them in the friend zone. I'm so sorry. A bunch of you Portuguese people told me. Portugal actually has the oldest friendship treaty with the UK starting from the 14th century. And uh, Charles II, his wife Catherine of Braganza, introduced tea to the UK. So, uh, so uh, you know, if it wasn't for uh, the Portuguese, uh, they probably wouldn't have had tea. And you know how crazy the Brits are for tea. Woohoo! Forgot to mention that the UK has micronations. I'm sure you probably heard of Sealand, the one that's on a uh, offshore platform. Let me put it this way. If I had kept all the information that was in the original script, the episode would have been like over five hours long, I swear. Like, I tried to condense it and it still came out as the longest episode on Geography Now at over 47 minutes. But in any case, if there's anything we missed, please write it in the comments otherwise we gotta move on so without further ado <laughs> This episode was so fun to film because I got to do a road trip with my buddy Tommy. We went from England to Scotland to Wales and back and it was crazy. We saw everything. And a funny little story, when we were in Edinburgh, I did a little Jugger Peep meetup and we bumped into Joey Boy. I called him Tommy Boy and Joey Boy. Joey was like, hey, I'm Welsh. You're going to Wales. Why don't I show you guys around my area of the woods? So we were like, we had extra space in the car. We got a Welshie. We're going to Wales. Okay. Also, uh, huge thanks to uh, Joe in Glasgow for hosting us randomly at the last second. Really appreciate it, man. You're amazing. Anyway, enough uh, behind the scenes context behind all this stuff. Let's go to the flag, shall we? The finalized version of the flag that we have today was created in 1801 after the Act of Union. Basically, the flag is a combination of the saint flags for each of the constituent countries that make up the UK. The flag of St. George for England, the saltire of Scotland for St. Andrew, and the saltire of St. Patrick, which represents the Kingdom of Ireland, back when the whole island was under British control. Wales isn't directly represented because at the time, Wales was part of the Kingdom of England. Although emblems depicting a red dragon date back to the 7th century during the Kingdom of Gwynedd, there was no standard red dragon banner or flag until 1959, and by then the UK had already invented the Union Jack. They shaved down the flag of St. Patrick to give distinction on how the flag would be held upright. You can tell if the top hoist red line is touching the left side or not. If it is touching the top, then that means the flag is upside down. So since the Welsh flag is not represented in the UK flag, let's give them a little love and let's kind of explain a little bit more about them. So first off, the Welsh flag, as you can see, has a red dragon. Basically, this has to do with the Arthurian legend of the red dragon representing the Celtic peoples, fighting against a white dragon representing the Anglo-Saxons, symbolizing how the Welsh were able to push back against the Anglo-Saxons to maintain their own land. Some say that maybe for Welsh representation, they could use the cross of Saint David, which is their patron saint. It has a yellow and black configurations, but then everybody's just like, eh, it takes too long and we've already had the Union Jack. Just, let's just leave it the way it is. We gotta move on, okay? Coat of arms. Now, it's important to note, you have to understand, there are actually two of them. One for Scotland and one for the rest of the UK. For the UK, the emblem has a lion on the left and a chained unicorn on the right, symbolizing England and Scotland. The shield is split up into four parts, two quadrants representing the lions of England and one for the lion of Scotland and one with the harp of Ireland. At the bottom is the motto in French, Dieu et mon droit, which means God God is my right, alluding to the former Norman dynastic times in which a preliminary version of French was spoken by the elite. At the bottom are Tudor roses and shamrocks. Surrounding the shield is the Order of the Garter, the United Kingdom's most senior order of knighthood. And on the top is the helmet and crown and lion. Now for Scotland, however, the chained unicorn is on the left with the lion on the right and each holding flags of their respective nations. On the shield, they have the opposite configuration in which the shield has two quadrants for the lion of Scotland and only one for the Lions of England. Around the shield is the Order of the Thistle, and on top of the crown, which is by the way stylized to show the crown of Scotland, is a red lion representing the honors of Scotland. On top of it is a motto saying in defense, which is in the Scots dialect slash language. And at the bottom, in Latin, the motto says Neo me impune la chesit. No one will attack me with impunity. And on the green grass lies only thistles. Quick little side note, why is the unicorn in chains? Well, legend has it that only a king can 
can overpower and command a unicorn. So if you look at the unicorn, you'll see that it has a crown and chains representing the fact that it was under command of the monarch. Fun fact, if you collect all the coins of the UK, you can make the coat of arms. Honestly, like heraldry and vexillology go so far with the UK, it's insane. Like government offices and the monarchs and even like the consorts of the monarchs each have their own coat of arms, but it like switches up the unicorn to a different animal. I think Queen Camilla has like a boar. Whatever, I don't know, look into it, figure it out. We're done here. That means we only got one thing left to do. It's time for Geagra Fan Mail Time. Uh, all right guys, welcome back to Flag Slash Fan Day. As you know, we always have to have a guest star. And uh, guess who I found? Oh! Hello! You remember him from the Spain episode? Hola, I'm Jose. I'm from Spain. I live in LA and I'm so happy to be back here with Barb. How have you been, man? What have you been up to since the Spain episode? I've been good. I've been traveling a little bit back and forth. Spain, Argentina, having a lot of fun. Yeah, nice to be back here. You ready to just read some fan mail? Let's do it. Postcards and letters. Dear Geography Now, hello, it's me, Harry again from Canada. Did you know that your show has a 9.3 on IMDb? What? Pretty cool. That's Wait, nice. I didn't even know. Geography Now is on IMDb? Yes, it's official. <laughs> 9.3, that's really good. I was not aware of that, but okay. People, I don't know how these things happen. Like, I think I have a Wikipedia page too, but I don't pay attention. You should. Since the Spain episode, have you gotten any recognition or people messaging you or what's what's your life been like? Your fans are so nice. I've received a lot of comments from, from you guys. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for being nice to Jose. From Novi Sad, Serbia, you wrote entirely in Cyrillic in the Serbian alphabet. <laughs> I can read Cyrillic, but I don't know what I'm going to be reading. No. Nozdravia. Oh, I think that's oh. Nozdravio or something. I don't know. I don't know what these words mean, uh, but it says in English at the very bottom, I love your mommy. <laughs> oh, she's the sweetest. Oh, yeah, you met my mom. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Anyway, this is from Polina. You wrote your name in English, but you wrote everything else in Serbian. Okay. Dennis and Marisa. Hi, Barb's greetings from Bekwe. Mm -hmm. St. Vincent was the third Geography Now video I watched. Uh, the crystal clear waters and the the marine life here are amazing, making me jealous. One day I promise to buy some merch. <laughs> <laughs> You're a great model, man. This is from Brunei. Oh, we haven't gotten Brunei in a long time. Uh, are there any countries from where you didn't get a postcard? Let me know, I might send you something. Jan from Czechia. Yeah, I think Kiribati is one that I know I did not get a postcard from. So yeah, nice, nice little challenge for yeah. your subscribers. Speaking of which, uh, Jose, what's your next travel destination? Where would you like to go? Oh, I'm dying to go to Japan. Mm. It's so cool. And I, I grew up watching anime okay. and I love Japanese food. So. Oh, who doesn't? The card says Mali. Dear Paul, thank you for doing Geography Now. I'm in the, I'm upstate New York. I use your videos for school. We learned about Mali today. Oh, so, you, oh, but you're actually from New York. I think your name is Carson. You, you tricked me, man. I thought this was from Mali, but you're from New York. From Indonesia, from Enda. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's my mom. <laughs> the way I knew your channel, uh, I searched in English and your video about Indonesia was on the first page. Yes. yes. By the way, uh, the UK episode was number eight trending for the UK on YouTube. So nice. Send my regards to your mom. Your mom gets so much love. She's I love that. Man, I wish you, she's in Korea. Korea right now, I wish she was here. They also sent the, oh, right. Indonesian money. There's money there? Yeah. Wow. Um, they drew the national flowers of various countries. Uh, thank you so much drawing all the flowers of the countries. That's really cool. So that's all the uh, letters and postcards. Now we just got packages. Jose, why Let's don't you start? Let's see. All right. La Hobito. Hobito. Oh, the Hobbit. Oh, the Hobbit. Okay. No, this is not Spanish. I don't know what language this is. Oh, I thought Obito was Spanish, no? Oh, the book. Is in the book is in Esperanto. The universal the, the, language? Yeah, the constructed language. Yeah. The guy, the Polish guy created it. He sent the Esperanto flag. And the postcard is from Kentucky. Oh, did he also send anything else? A South it? Antarctica flag. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Thank you, Mr. Eric from Kentucky. Uh, hi, Paul and friends. I'm from Des Moines, Iowa. I love your content and have been watching since the Nigeria episode. I uh, recently went on a trip to London. I sent you some souvenirs I got during the trip. I also sent you a couple of Iowa souvenirs. Hope you like them. Zoe, uh, this is really cool. Hope you enjoyed your London trip. I was just there for the UK episode. I spent a summer learning English in York. Okay. It was super fun. I liked it a lot. From the Netherlands, big fan of your channel. So sending some gifts for you, like this card. Also added two neck warmers. That's probably this. From, I need help pronouncing this as well. Hoo hoo, I have no idea. It's a liquor company. 
Nice, liquor company neck warmer. <laughs> <laughs> and watch out for the random crocodile. I love the random crocodile. Visit some time for a beer and a Coke. Berenger, Berenberg. These two postcards from Yemen. This is from Bill. Oh, Bill. Bill sent us stuff before. It says, uh, mainland Yemen was intense. Our vehicles were accompanied by a truck with armed soldiers to keep us safe. We were only allowed in the south and central Yemen as fighting was going on elsewhere. The mainland seems to consist of a vast series of interconnected canyons. Bill, I'm so glad uh, you got to enjoy your experience in Yemen. I know it's a little uh, intense because of the situation, but yeah, beautiful country. And I can't wait to do the episode. It's one of the last episodes, Yemen, why? And then- Well, that's right, yeah, getting yes. there. If any of you guys are Yemeni watching the show, hit me up. Maybe we can uh, work on your episode. And there's a oh, big last here. one. Uh, my name is Brandon. I'm from Cleveland. Uh, I'm a good friend of Malika. Oh, from the Turkmenistan episode. Okay. Um, I'm currently getting my master's in geography. I wanted to give you some awesome resources while in the US, as you know, is uh, known for pop, rock, and rap. I love teaching the world about folk traditions, uh, whether it's Zydeco in in Louisiana or old timey music in Appalachia, stick pounding by the Gullah, fancy dancers and powwows or Midwestern style polka in Cleveland. We have so much to offer. He also gives this book, Exploring American Folk Music. Uh, the larger book is A Sacred Harp. Sing is considered to be the oldest, not including Native American form of American folk singing. Lastly, the sticks you see are Irish bones or just the bones. It is a folk instrument used in Appalachian folk music uh, brought by the Scots Irish settlers that worked over there. Oh. oh. How do you play so, this? I, I don't know, I'm, I'm guessing. It's like that. Spanish castañuelas. I am so excited for the USA episode. There's so much information. I don't know how I'm gonna condense it, but I have a feeling this is gonna help. So thank you, Mr. Brandon, for sending all this stuff. That's a lot. That's, That's a lot of stuff. <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, I don't know. Jose, any last words you wanna say to the Geography Now community? No, so fun being back here. And yeah, thank you all for being awesome. Yeah, I uh, hope you guys uh, enjoy the rest of your day and stay cool, stay tuned. Bye.